Welcome to Mallorca once again, welcome to the Best Centre. Today is the 24th of June and uh, later in the programme we have a chance to talk with Rod Hart, a swim coach who's here with the Swim Trek group who will talk all about how he develops his swimmers from the pool into the open water and some terrific tips for triathletes. That's later in the programme but we start with the news and yesterday was uh, Olympic Day where the Olympic movement encourages people across the world to get moving and enjoy the benefits of physical activity. So get involved this week and get moving. Well, we'll get moving on the swimming news and we start with my old swim team, Santa Clara in California, where Katinka Hoshu confirmed herself as the dominant swimmer in the US Swimming Pro Series. The Hungarian finished the series as a top point scorer, winning five events in Santa Clara and walking off with $18,000 in the process. The top, men were, the top man was Connor Dwyer, who scored $12,000 to his credit over the series. Well, among the wins for the Hungarian, she won the 2 and 400 medley, 431 her time from the heats in the 400. She also won the 100 and 200 back and the 200 fly. Her 207.9 in the 200 back, nearly two seconds clear of world and Olympic champion Missy Franklin, who finished third in both the 100 and 200. Be very interesting to see how she gets on as one of the favourites in Kazan. Femke Henskirk is another who crossed the world and duly won the 1 and 200 free. She held off Hoshu, Franklin, and Alison Schmidt in that 200 freestyle race. And here's what she said afterwards. 200 was really good, 50 was okay, and 100 I expect a little bit more of that. And even if I go off field, it was like feeling way faster than I actually showed on scoreboard. So just need to take a look at that and see what I can do better. Yeah, well, I never did a competition in the US and I think like uh, most of my main competitors are from the US, especially in the 200 and uh, I think it's weird that you never, that I just race them once every two years and so I thought like it's, it's good fun, it's, uh, it's good uh, progress, you know, or learning uh, from this competition because things go way different than in Europe. No, and uh, yeah. it was a lot of fun, and I think that's count most. Now, Michael Phelps has enjoyed a lot of success over the years in Santa Clara, and he was back to winning ways with victory in the 200 fly and the 200 medley. 157 in the 200 fly, 159 in the medley. Again, it'll be interesting to compare Phelps' swims at the US Nationals with the times from Kazan, both championships taking place at the same time in early August. And speaking of superstars on the comeback, 32-year-old Natalie Coughlin is looking to add to her 12 Olympic medals in Rio next year. She set an American record 27.51 in the 50 back. Well, two to watch in Kazan for the US, Ryan Murphy in the backstrokes after his 53.8, and the women, for the women, the sprinter Simone Manuel, who so dominated at the NC2A Championships this year, and she won the 50 freestyle here, 24-7. Now in Spain, Maria Del Monte and Erika Villaethica will provide a powerful team in the 5K open water events in Kazan. The pair battled stroke for stroke to finish in the trials in Banyolas. They were only separated by two one hundredths of a second. The verdict going to Villaethica. Del Monte, double Olympic silver medalist in the pool and won bronze at the Europeans last year. Villaethica is Olympic and world finalist in the 800 and the world short course champion, former world short course champion in the 1500. Now we're also getting news over in Denmark that Jeanette Otterson is reported to have broken a finger in an apparent road rage assault on her and her boyfriend Marco Lochran, the British Olympian. Speaking to TV2, Otterson said the attacker beat Lochran in the head, broke his teeth and then injured her fingers. So bad news from uh, Denmark, we hope that Ottersen is back to full strength in time for the World Championships at Kazan. And now we get a chance to uh, talk in more depth uh, with Rod Hart about transitioning from open water, uh, transitioning from the swimming pool into open water. Here's what he says. So here we are with Rod Hart, who's one of the leaders of uh, the, the open water group of Swim Trek that we've got again with us this week. Rod, tell us about the group that you've got this week. Well, we have uh, what's termed the beginners, really, the introduction to open water. So these guys may not have swum in open water at all, uh, may have come from a pool swimming background, 
And so we're making sure that their first experience in the ocean is something that's enjoyable. We're hoping to give them the tools they need to improve after the week. Uh, we do a lot of work with them in the pool, of course, which is why the Best Sensory is a great facility for us. And uh, we hope they're going to progress and come back to us and uh, maybe do the next course, which is the open water course itself. Now, traditionally, Swim Trek is, is, is big open water swims, island to island, a lot of fun. What's the difference between that and what you do this week using the swimming pool and the open water here? Okay, well this is a coaching sort of trip. So I'm, I'm a coach and so I'm used as a, as a coach by Swim Trek for this trip. Um, so unlike the other trips, which are, as you say, island hopping, uh, this is entirely coastal, it's very safe, it's all very controlled because we're taking people that may not have experienced open water swimming at all yet. So we do a lot of work with them to start within the pool to get their confidence and to see where they're at in terms of their own swimming and then we'll very quickly introduce some open water techniques in the pool before we get them in the ocean. Things like uh, sighting, very important for us uh, because we want people to stay in line and uh, we don't want anybody going off to Isla Cabrera or something. Although it is beautiful there. Yeah. Once you get into the open water, talk about the, the sort of support that you offer to the swimmers that maybe aren't as experienced, as you say, this is a beginner group. When they get into the open water, what support do they have? Well, firstly, we try and get the, the guys themselves, the swimmers, to buddy up and to work together as a group. Because uh, a lot of people like that security of swimming together in the ocean. Uh, plus the fact we are SLSGB qualified surf lifeguards. Uh, we always have two safety boats on every swim, uh, sometimes we'll have a, a rescue board, so we are on them all the time, we're within 10 seconds of the swimmers at any given moment. When you're dealing with this sport you make incremental changes and so a lot of people would like to come away after one week having got it and really improved. Some people of course as you know will get that, um, but realistically um, I want them to come away from this confident with the tools they need to improve. Now you're a background as a swimming coach yourself and yep. you've set up your own, your own company, Swimmergy. What do they do? Well, Swimmergy evolved from my coaching uh, for many years before I actually set up Swimmergy. And I specialise only in open water uh, freestyle technique. So it's very much a niche company. Um, also, we use FASA ergometer swim benches, and I know we've talked about this ourselves, and for me, that's one of the greatest coaching tools that I can lay my hands on. Um, things like being able to talk to the swimmer away from the complication of the water, and then get them in the water. It's often a sort of light bulb moment. It was for me when I first got on a swim bench. I realised maybe I hadn't been swimming the right way for me up until that moment. So um, I was put on and you know there's this thing called early vertical forearm and oh, what's that? Okay well it goes like this and it's very easy because you know your coach can hold this arm here and demonstrate this and you feel it straight away. There's no water so everything you do on the bench when, when we coach as swimmergy we make sure we exaggerate everything that would happen in the water because you haven't got the buoyancy so body position is number one. And then yeah as you say you can get hold of uh, swimmers' limbs and you can say this is where it is, it's not here, it's not here, and it's very easy. Um, one thing that I found, I don't know if you've experienced, when a lot of beginners, particularly in freestyle, will breathe and forget what's happening to the outstretched arm and they lose the balance in that arm and so the arm goes down, they lean on the arm, they drop it, the torso sinks and then all sorts of things go wrong. Well, I found if you get beginners, even intermediate swimmers, straight onto the swim bench, uh, do a, we do a course for, for that sort of work, they already maintain that outstretched arm and I don't have to run around in the ocean or in the sea or in the, in the, in the pool correcting that very common fault. The, the thing to say about all this technology is that it has to be used properly because uh, that's why you probably don't see swim benches in gyms everywhere because people will just get on and do this and it's got nothing to do with swimming so you do need a coach who knows how to use one to actually induct you into it. So um, I think, apart from the coaching side, uh, aerobic fitness um, and not a replacement for your pool sessions or your open water sessions, but uh, it's a secret weapon. It's the best secret weapon. So the, 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 the swim benches and the VASA trainers are ideal for this. We'll, we'll talk about some of the common mistakes that you see from open water swimmers in the group with swim trek or, or, or the work that you've done with triathletes or others. Talk about some of the common mistakes that you see. Well, I think particularly triathletes whose 
strongest suits are the run and the bike, very commonly, they haven't maybe come from a swimming background, they tend to rush into the swim and try to learn the swim part of it, and maybe not going through the process. You know, if you're trying to learn something, you just have to relax, try and absorb, and it will happen if you go through the process. The triathletes that I've worked with have all been into their times in the pool and wanting that to translate into open water swimming. And there are, there are differences with open water because you don't have anything to gauge your progress by. So they, they tend to immediately work at their top level of, of effort rather than learning to train at that lower effort range, which I think is, when you're getting stroke development together, I think that's the important thing, to relax and learn how to train at the, the lower effort as well as your threshold. Uh, body position is, is the next thing, because um, as you know in open water, if you're relaxed and you go with the waves, you, you feel what's happening, you're going to float, particularly in a wetsuit in salt water, you don't have to do very much else. But some guys, the first few weeks into open water, it feels very tense and they tend to fight that feeling and not be at one with the, with the ocean. So that's, it's, that's more what I want them to, to do, Rob. One final question. You're always smiling. What's <laughs> <Yes>. the secret? <laughs> um, there's some very good Armagnac down the road from made, made in Mallorca. Have you tried it? Wow, I think. No, don't put that in the interview. Uh, this is a great job, isn't it? I mean, look at this place. It's sunny. This is full of international athletes. I'm rubbing shoulders with some coaches. I've just been speaking to Morton, getting some tips about this level of coaching, finding out that these athletes are training 70 hours per week. I mean, I'm smiling. I don't do that, that makes me smile, but I just, I love the place, I love being here. Um, I want to come back and do a lot more, so it's... Uh, well, we hope to see you again, we, we look forward to seeing Swim Trek again, and uh, always a pleasure. Nice, nice to, to see you again. again. Nice to see you, thank you. Well, thank you for your company today, we'll see you at the same time, same place next week. Bye for now.